Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Adam at Maker Table. Um, I made a video a while ago about how to use Inkscape for plasma cutting and uh, it was really long and pretty complicated and I covered a lot of ground. Um, so I decided that it would probably be better if I broke this up into a few different um, videos. Um, so I basically, I'm going to make this sign here but in so doing, I'm going to go over basically three main skills. Uh, this video is going to revolve around uh, working with text here in Inkscape, which is a free program that can generate vectors uh, that your plasma table or um, plotter or vinyl cutter or even laser, water jet, you know, any sort of uh, plotting XY control table can deal with. Um, and uh, what a vector is, is basically a straight line really nice clean straight lines with XY coordinates, little nodes is what they're called, little dots here. Um, and we'll get into that at the very end. But I just wanted to show you um, two main principles of positive uh, space text right up here and negative space text right up here. Um, first thing you're going to want to learn is control Z. That undoes whatever you just did. If you mess up, don't trip. You've got control Z. Um, and then if you want to redo what you just undid, you can hit control shift Z. Uh, and you can pretty much move back and forward in time on your computer using those two keys in a lot of places actually. Um, so first of all, let's go over some positive space text. This is the easiest. Um, people love this. You're going to select, uh, follow my comically oversized mouse over here. This is your text tool. Um, oh, sorry, don't double click on it. And we're going to write the top line of this sign here. Um, as you scroll or as you drag and scale stuff, you want to hold control. Uh, for some reason, my uh, keystroke uh, tracker is not showing you that I'm holding control right now, but I am holding control. Here's what happens if you drag without holding control. Is you get these really weird stretched you know, features. Uh, this can be handy for some stuff, but most of the time you pick the font because you like how it looks. Um, so let's keep our regular sizing here. Um, and then I'm going to go and select my font. Um, that I want. I downloaded this uh, American Captain. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so it's going to fit on this sign. Um, you know, maybe it's a little bit too big. That's probably about right. Um, but I'm going to show you how we <coughs> recreate this sign. Um, the next thing you're going to deal with, if you're cutting with vinyl, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, you can probably take this to like your vinyl cut master software or whatever you're using and uh, that's probably enough but for plasma we've got a few more steps here we need to connect these together in some way I'm going to show you um, a few different ways to do that so the easiest way is you make a line I've got my opacity on here uh, so let's fix that 100 I want this nice solid black and uh, you just bump it up against the bottom and make it touch the bottom there we go that's right there nice and tight and then same thing over here. Alright, so um, this is about the most complicated it's ever going to get here, folks, is if you have um, some text you just wrote and a box you just drew and uh, you want to basically combine these together because if you send this to your plasma, it's going to cut this box and uh, it's going to cut these letters and they won't be connected. So you're going to have to go through a few steps here. First of all, you're going to have to convert all this to a path, which is you can go up here path object to path is what we're doing but it's a uh, shift control C so we're gonna shift control C and now all this stuff is a path meaning it's nodes um, and then we're going to uh, control shift control K we're gonna break this apart uh, so each one of these things becomes separate shift control K here let's make sure shift control K we broke it apart See how now um, these are two separate things? And then last thing we got to do is shift control G, which is ungroup. And now we have all these separate letters and this separate box down here. You can select each one by itself. And uh, so once again, this is going to cut all this stuff out separately. It's not going to give you what you want with plasma. You have one last step, and that is union. So we need to, uh, let's see, control shift plus plus and now all this is one object ready to cut you can check by clicking your node tool over here and this will show you each one of these dots is an XY coordinate that your plasma table is actually going to go to 
um, while it's cutting. Um, so now we have our positive space sign, um, and this is actually ready to save, control shift S, as a DXF. Um, actually, let me show you what happened here. I went too fast. So if you select this, you want to hit control shift R, that's going to make this uh, come into your cam software. This corner will be your origin. Um, if you didn't do this step, it'll come in floating around somewhere else. Um, you can still grab it, but this just makes it a little bit easier um, before you save. So Control Shift S is save, and you're going to save as DXF. Let's name this these colors. And uh, if that's all you want to do, guys, you can take off. You've successfully made a positive space sign. Um, obviously, if uh, well, not so obviously. Um, let me show you if you want to do this in cursive really quick. Let's find a cursive font. Anyone will do. Oh, well, not that one. It's not cooperating. Uh, no, that one's too complicated. Birds of Paradise. Okay, this one works. Um, if you want to do cursive, it's pretty easy. This stuff is almost all joined together here. Um, but this, uh, you see the CO uh, is not connected, the E isn't touching. Um, so what you're going to want to do here is your, um, what is it again? Control Shift C, um, Control Shift K, Control Shift G, now you've ungrouped, and now you've got each one of these things separately. You can select them and then you can bring them over and we can make them touch. And once they're touching, now these two words will cut out together. Um, you see up here that the top of the H and the T aren't touching. Um, so you can actually go over here to nodes. And uh, once you select this T and this node tool over here, you can grab these and actually bump them up. So it starts looking weird, but you make them touch. And then you can go and smooth some of these nodes out if you want. Um, I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, it takes forever, but sometimes it's worth it. And now we're going to make these touch. And now we've got these two. Oh, here we go. We got this right here. Is not touching. Now we got these touching. All right, so now this is one big piece of metal, and this is one big piece of metal. And uh, we can go over here and uh, control shift plus plus. Now it's all joined together, and we have one nice, happy node family um, that can cut out as uh, two big pieces. Uh, if we hit control Z, uh, control Z, let me show you. We still have separate nodes. This is all going to cut out as one letter. This is going to cut out as a separate letter. This is going to cut out as a separate letter. You see where I'm going here? You don't want separate letters. You want this to be one big piece. So that's why I have to go through all these steps. Anyways, not doing cursive, but if you want to do cursive, you can do cursive now, folks. All right, now let's do some negative space. This is kind of easy land for uh, plasma, I think. There's just a few little tricks here, um, but let's go through it so you guys can all be on the same page. Um, here is my font holding control while I scale. Can't see it because it's black on black, so I'm going down here. I'm going to select white. Uh, go back to my text tool. Uh, I'm going to pick my font which is this American captain and then I'm gonna scale this up so this is another tool I'm gonna to show you if you notice um, these aren't quite the same width this is narrower and uh, in this sign I have these almost the same width so they look you know kinda of visually the same weight is what I'd call it um, so there's a tool if you go back to your text select this and up here this is uh, known as kerning and this is how you set the space between your letters. It's any number between 0 and 100. Um, and it, it'll create more space evenly throughout all of your text paths. It's super handy. Um, I think 65 is actually where, where I want to be for this. Um, uh, because I just did it over here, guys. That's how I know already. Uh, but usually you can just punch in a bunch of different numbers till you find out what you want. Um, then you're going to need to add lead-ins. The middle of this D, the middle of this O, the middle of this R are going to fall away and disappear into your water table, downdraft table, or maybe just onto your floor. 
depending on what kind of setup you've got. Um, and you really want those to, to hang tight so that they can make it in the final piece um, so you can read the sign. So I'm going to draw a box here, um, make it black, and then I'm going to get my picker tool, change this to inches because uh, I'm in America. If you're somewhere else, you can use whatever you want. But 0.2 inches is a pretty safe bet in all conditions, all thicknesses of metal for a lead-in. Uh, if you're using fine cut consumables, cutting really thick material, um, you know, there's like other thicknesses that will work, but I'm just telling you guys, that's one that does in most situations. Um, sorry, I just drew that and I hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Really, um, you know, pretty basic Windows stuff here. Control V, I'm going to paste another one. And you can set these wherever you want. Um, sometimes you can get away with it just connected on the bottom. Um, I'm just showing you guys all the way through. Keep it safe. Make sure nothing falls out. Um, so we've got all of our lead-ins in. We've got our text kerned. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's uh, center it up. We have a line. So we'll center it this way, center it this way. Now we're centered up. Uh, if you want this to be your sign, there's the last step is you select everything. Hit Alt-B now. And this is going to take an image. So we go from nice scalable perfectly straight line uh, which is all fonts or scalable vectors um, and then it took a snapshot of it and made it this pixelated line uh, what you know it's kind of not ideal to have pixels um, but you'll see why we do that in a second here um, we lost all the different boxes this file up here is this box these let's see here these letters and all of these separate boxes. It's going to try and cut out all these different things um, at once and it's not going to turn out very well. This however can now be traced. Uh, Shift Alt B, remove background. Um, you can click the preview if you want to see it and uh, this is going to change it back into a nice DXF vector file that um, we can send right to the plasma and as you drag this off you'll notice you can see through. What was white is now empty space and then the last thing to check is this node tool. Boom, we've got nodes. These are XY coordinates that the plasma table or plotter or whatever you're using um, can follow um, as directions to control your cutting head. So this again is now ready. Uh, control Shift R to uh, resize the canvas around it and Control Shift S. We can save this as a DXF. And that is ready to cut and put into a cam software here. All right, guys. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. These are like the greatest, most common text tools in Inkscape that you will use if you are um, trying to send this on to another cutting file um, or you know machine, basically. So good luck. Um, video two will cover um, basically a little bit more composition and uh, how to uh, remove um, the background colors and add an image basically to text. Um, that's really the next part of this uh, sign making deal. So uh, please, if you guys thought this was cool and useful, hit, sub hit subscribe. Um, you know where the button is. It's right